assuming that everyone knows about as much as I did before sort of going down like a <laughs> rabbit hole. Let's talk, uh, let's kind of define what minerals are. Like there's different categories of minerals. We have macro minerals, we have micro minerals. Walk us through what are some of the different categories? And then maybe more importantly, why do we need to be paying attention to minerals in the first place? Yeah, that's, it's a, it's a great place to start. And the way that I like to frame this for people is if you think about your body, and you took all the water out of your body, you would be a little pile of minerals. So if you think about that, that helps people begin to understand the importance of minerals. They are fundamental foundational elements. If you look around the room that you're in right now, every single structural element is made of minerals, every single thing. All of the plants out in, when you walk out into nature, everything, it's all made of minerals and water. So, you know, of course there are other compounds, amino acids and all sorts of things like that. But at the fundamental level, all the structure is made of minerals. So in your body, you have what we call macro minerals. Those are often called electrolytes. Um, so the potassium, the magnesium, these are the, these are the minerals that your body uses a lot of. So if you think about your body and you think about the earth, we came from the earth and the ratios of minerals in our body that make up that little pile of minerals, if you took out all the water, the ratio of minerals in there would be the same ratios as mother earth. So you have a lot of magnesium, calcium, those big structural elements, molecules, and you have smaller, very, very important amounts of the micronutrients, things they, like molybdenum, phosphorus, things that you would never take a pill for, but are very important in, for particular functions in the body. So when we're, when we're talking about macro minerals, are these, are these minerals that typically have a charge? Like they have, you know, like MG plus, like, you know, I'm just thinking back to my chemistry. It's like CA2 yeah. plus and MG plus and, you know, CL minus, like, you know, are these the ones that we typically see with like a charge on them? Is that how we categorize macro minerals or is it just the, the molecular weight and size of them? Um, they actually, the macro minerals, it's, it's more about how many, how much you need in your body. Okay. So it's about that when you when you think of a macro mineral, it's not about necessarily the charge, because all minerals have a charge stronger or less strong. They all have a charge. That's how they actually operate. When you drive down into minerals, and you really start learning about them, you end up realizing that everything is vibration, actually, it's it's it, you get into quantum mechanics and quantum physics, it's really, it gets very complex, very quickly, my job is to keep it keep it simple. But the basic thing is, all minerals have a charge. Yes, electrolytes, what we call electrolytes, which are the, um, we call them also the macro minerals, mainly because you need a lot of them, your body uses a lot of them. Yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking about like an action potential, like the way that a nerve depolarizes. It's like, you know, you have the sodium and you have the calcium channels that and everything rushes in and then depolarizes the cell. And then you have this refractory period. And these are like the big sort of macro minerals as you were and the potassium and the sodium as you were, as you were mentioning. And that's such a great place to start because when you think about what you just described, you realize that the entire body, which is made of cells, you know, we tend to think about our body like organs, tissues, systems, you know, cardiovascular, thyroid, you know, these different endocrine, different types of systems, et cetera. But really your entire body is made of cells. And inside your cells, you have mitochondria. And mitochondria are these energy generating units. They generate all of the, all of the energy in your body, every single part of energy, including the energy that is required to do what that process that you're talking about that you were just describing. So minerals and, and what did, what drives a mitochondria, what fuels a mitochondria, two things, minerals and amino acids, mm -hmm. those two things. So we, your body makes a lot of amino acids. It makes no minerals. All of those minerals have to be ingested or brought into your body in some way. 
So in the same way that we have like essential amino acids, like all of our minerals would be categorized as essential, essential because we can't end endogenously produce them, that we have to source them from our diet. We have to source them from outside of us. That's exactly right. That's a really good way of thinking about it. So all minerals are essential. Um, of course, there are minerals that we don't know the uses of in the body. We haven't defined or, or clarified what those are, but deficiencies in them have been identified um, relative to chronic illness or, or issues in the body. So um, they haven't necessarily found the, chemi the specific pathway of how that is, the, how that connection is made but they recognize them. So, but the real thing for people to think about is at the bottom, at the very foundational level in your body, all energy is generated in the mitochondria inside your cells. And just as a reference point, I think it's great to think, to think about this. So inside, you have about 37 trillion to 150 trillion cells in your body. I mean, it's a big range. And inside each cell, like a skin cell on your arm, you might have, oh, maybe 40 mitochondria in one cell. In your heart, in one single cell in your heart, you might have five to 7,000 mitochondria. In your eye, in one single cell in your eye, you might have 40,000 mitochondria. So, and, and it's relative to how much energy and how essential that part of your body is. In your brain, there's even more in one single cell. And the thing that I, I really want people to understand is that minerals are driving the energy production inside those cells. So when the minerals are not available to the mitochondria, the cell goes into an anaerobic function and it can only generate about one twelfth of the energy that it can generate when it has all of the minerals available. So just so I'm just so I'm understanding this, when we have so in the mitochondrial, uh, let's say in the Krebs cycle or when they're generating ATP, this has to be done under aerobic conditions. Well, that, it can be mean? done under anaerobic conditions. But so in in the Krebs cycle, at every stage of the Krebs cycle that a mitochondria goes through, what is required is are these cofactors. One is a mineral and one is an amino acid, and those come together. And each one, at each stage, it'll be a different mineral requirement. So that's why you need a full spectrum of minerals rather than just the five electrolytes that most people take. Right. So this okay. is another really important thing. So, and when those minerals aren't available as cofactors, it sends the cell into an anaerobic function and the amount of energy that it can generate in an anaerobic function is like one twelfth. So the, what, what kind of scientists say is that most people, because we are very mineral deficient, in fact, they have a term for it now, um, the World Health Organization has um, clarified a term called hidden hunger. And the hidden hunger is micronutrient deficiency. And there's also, if you can go on the World Health Organization, they've got a lot of articles about this is the issue of our age. Is this why we have people that are eating soil? Is this why you see, is that what that hidden hunger is? Hidden hunger, mean, I'm, I'm assuming this applies some sort of uncontrollable satiety? Oh. No, the hidden hunger means that you feel hungry all the time. You can't quite get fulfilled. You're, you're craving sugar, you're craving salt, you're craving, you know, you, you're, you ha your body is in stress, anxiety, you're not sleeping because literally every cell in your body does not find the minerals that it, and micronutrients that it needs to ah. support optimal function. You see, so we're all, so scientists say that I've spoken with, they think that probably people are operating about 40% of the minerals that they need in their body. So if you have a light in your room, and you just dimmed it down to 40%, that's like how most people are operating. So imagine if you can just supplement effectively and bring minerals into your body, it's like turning your entire light up. That's that's really, uh, I, I feel like every perimenopausal woman listening to, <laughs> to the show, it's like, that, maybe that's why I'm always hungry.